Hello and welcome to the Guna Talk. Back again with you guys for another show and another episode of our Raw Reaction series. Yes, this is live. You'll be very happy to know. Good morning to everybody in the chat box. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing good. Continuing to make this part of your morning routine. Fantastic stuff. Uh, I hope you did enjoy yesterday's show. Of course, apologies. Uh, I was working, uh, so I couldn't do the show. And tomorrow morning, in fact, I'm working again. Uh, at 8 a.m. so I won't be able to bring you the live show as it usually is but I have got something else planned not like yesterday's show it's going to be something a little different it's going to be kind of as it is going to be the last show of the year I thought and obviously the day before the January window it might be a good idea to do kind of a guide to the January window if you like so I think we're going to do that tomorrow morning and that'll be your 8 a.m. show um but it won't be live as in you know me answering your questions like i'm going to be able to do today but i am going to be uh doing that tomorrow but uh, apologies again that there won't be the normal show tomorrow but work permitting uh there's going to be something for you else uh else out there as well so there you go um let's go to the chat boys good morning to matt good morning to kaiser stevie jordan uh alvern uh from texas uh, good morning, Essex. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Jose. We've got uh, Paul Murphy in here as well. We've got Lars Gorin. We've got uh, MFB from Malaysia. James, Terry Spicer, or Spicer, who knows? Uh, we've got uh, Danger Close. He said Tom needs a win to win wind his watch. I mean, is, there's a lot of stuff that's going on this morning, which meant that uh, there was a lot of stuff to organise for this morning's show. A lot of stories that we've got to go through. Like th this could be a bit of a bumper one this morning because there's so many things to talk about. Good morning to Andreas, to Aston, to Ansa. Sorry that if I've missed your names. Good morning to everybody else that's joining us. Uh, from all over the world. I see some of our Western listeners deciding to get up at a ridiculous time in the morning to tune in, but thank you all the same for tuning in and listening. Um, but we kick off with the main story of the day uh, yesterday, which is, of course, Mikel Arteta. Uh, now, Mikel Arteta has, uh, as we now know, and I wasn't around to do the live show reaction to this, I did do a show on this with Harry Simu on the Arsenal way, which you, of course, can always go and check out uh, with the link in the description. But uh, Mikel Arteta tested positive. He's not going to be around and available for the game against Manchester City. And that's a big, big problem um, because obviously it's a situation whereby he's around a number of players all the time. And my concern is that we can expect some more positive tests in the days leading up to the game against Man City. I hope it's not the case, but that does seem to be what could happen. If he has been in around the players and he's been positive, there's a likelihood that he could have infected others. So that's a concern that I'm expecting to see grow in the next few days. I hope it doesn't, but it's a bit of an expectation at this point. Uh, Mohamed El Nenny has now officially been called up to the Egyptian national side for the African Cup of Nations. I know that this is a bit of a, it's not a big news story. We know that it was going to happen, but it has now officially happened. So he's going to be off playing in Cameroon this summer, or this winter rather. Um, Bellerin, regarding his time at Real Betis, he is said to be very, very much enjoying his time in Spain, in Seville with Real Betis. And it could look towards him staying at the club for a longer period of time or just in general in Spain. He will return to Arsenal with a year left on his contract. Arsenal will have the ability to sell him if they are able to. And so therefore they can earn a bit of money from his departure. But he's done very, very well since leaving Arsenal to Real Betis and is helping them to push towards a European qualification spot this season. Our next story concerns Tommy Yasu, a story that I know a lot of people are very, very concerned about and have good right to because he is still yet to be pictured in Arsenal training. Uh, as far as we're aware, wasn't at Arsenal or wasn't involved in Arsenal's training yesterday, in full training that is, and that is still a concern considering the game against Manchester City is now just today, tomorrow, and then Saturday away from happening. So... I wouldn't get your hopes up about seeing Tommy Asu play against Manchester City. I would be targeting him for the Liverpool game. He is still not yet in training it from the looks of, of the pictures that are being released by the club. But Charlie Patino has been pictured in uh, training, which is interesting with the first team. But the news does not look positive for Tommy Asu at this stage in time. Now, Per Metazaka has been very, very interestingly talking about Arsenal's transfer strategy. And in a recent interview, he said, we are in a state of upheaval and are building a team capable of development, which showed uh, which should be prepared with players from our own youth and professionals from abroad. 
In the meantime, we had lost our way. We tried to make connection to the top faster with costly commitments. We fell on our face with that. And it's a really, really good uh, kind of self-reflection, if you like, from Per Mertesacker. And it's also, it's interesting that it's coming from him. And it does kind of show how involved he is in not just the youth aspect of the club, but knowing what's going on with the recruitment outside of the club, working with Edu and working with Arteta that he is having such a ba- a big impact on what's going on at things. And that there's really kind of an understanding in and around the club that Arsenal have made mistakes. We've made mistakes with signings like Willian, David Luiz, Cedric, players like this. We've tried to make big signings of big investments of players that are you know in their prime or past their prime to try and get an immediate impact, and it's not worked. What we're trying to do now is obviously very different, and we're signing players that have got a real um, kind of push towards the end of their time with Arsenal in five, six, seven, eight, nine years, rather than having them succeed or what you would define as success. You wouldn't define any success in the case of a player like Willian, but a player that would come in and effectively be able to start now at the top of their game. You would sign players 25 and under that can have come in, you know, play at as much at the top of their game as possible at that stage of their development and then improve and go on to improve the club and be a collective group that goes towards the same goal. And that's what Per Metazak is talking about. And it does go to show the self-reflection and the admittance of the mistakes that have been made at the club already, which is good to see. Uh, our next story, and the first of quite a few transfer stories, uh, Dejan Kulisevsky. Uh, if Arsenal want to sign the Swedish international, then they will now need to compete with Bayern Munich for his signature. The German side have reportedly come in and are ready to open discussions with Juventus about a possible January deal. We know that Juventus have always looked across the continent to try and find some exciting young wide players. We've seen that with Gnabry, with Kingsley Coman, with Leroy Sané, and... They've also signed some other players in wide positions that you wouldn't have expected them to. Ivan Perisic, Douglas Costa. So we know that they're open to signing these types of players, redemption projects, players they can get more from. And Kulisevsky would fit into that. And it does maybe show that the level of kind of appreciation there is for this player on the continent. And maybe that Arsenal weren't so crazy to be looking at him. I still personally think there are better options if Arsenal want to sign a player in a wider position but that he is still a very, very decent player that could take Arsenal forwards in certain positions like depth for the right wing, more so than a starting position on the right wing. So that's that one. Uh, Dennis Zakaria, uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach midfielder, has been confirmed alongside Matthias Ginter with both of their contracts set to expire at the end of the season. They will both be leaving on a free in the summer, which does mean that they're available to... Uh, discuss with a foreign team in January about a pre-contract agreement. If Arsenal would like to go get Dennis Zakaria, they would be able to for a very cheap fee, but there is sure to be plenty of interest from a number of clubs. Uh, He is very highly rated. He's appreciated for his ability to play at central midfield, defensive midfield, uh, and actually his game in an offensive sense is definitely improving too. And when we did our tactical breakdown on him, uh, which I had a chat with Oliver Zeziger about his game. He feels that going forwards, it's certainly a part of his game that's improving. He has had an injury issue in the past with his knee, but he's got through that. He's back into the side. He's back and playing as much as he can do. But with the situation, he's they've been a bit reluctant to use him, I suppose. And then you've got Matthias Ginter, who's another centre-back, more experienced, could be a good move for Arsenal on a cheaper deal in the summer if they wanted to add some depth to the centre-back area and some experience. But we do have William Saliba coming back, so you have to consider that in this story as well. Now, Luka Jovic finds himself again linked with a move to Arsenal. In fact, Spanish outlets have claimed that Arsenal and Edu are looking at a possible loan move for the Serbian striker. Now, we have talked on this channel a number of times about the idea of Luka Jovic joining the club on a loan with an option. It makes sense because he's not getting too many minutes at Real Madrid. Arsenal had success by bringing in players from Real Madrid. We got a decent output from uh, from Danny Ceballos. We've got, we're have got we getting now a very good output from Martin Odegaard. Maybe we can do a similar kind of redemption story with Luka Jovic, if you like. He proved in the Bundesliga with Frankfurt that he can be a prolific striker, good on the ball, good with both feet, good with it, good in the air as well as a player. Not the tallest, but still good in the air when he does get on the end of headers. So he's got a lot of things going for him and maybe a six-month loan deal if we can't get kind of that marquee striker that we need to get in January, he could be a good option to bring on loan for the rest of the season. So that's the story regarding Luka Jovic. Now, with strikers, it was only a matter of time until Arsenal obviously got linked 
to Patrick Schick, the Czech Republic International. I wrote a piece on this, which I believe is already out. I'm just going to have a quick check on this one. Is it already out? Uh, it is indeed, uh, and you can go read it. And basically how Arsenal could use Eddie and Ketia as a bit part in a move for uh, Patrick Schick. The, the Czech Republic striker has been linked with the club according to 90 men who say Arsenal are amongst a number of teams that include Spurs, Manchester City and West Ham that are interested in Patrick Schick. Um, but Arsenal have a slight advantage with the fact that Eddie and Ketia and his camp specifically are looking at a move to the Bundesliga. Bayer Leverkusen, according to the Metro, are credited with an interest in Eddie and Ketia. And so therefore, if Arsenal could look possibly in January to, you know, work their way, a possible cash plus player swap deal, that is there because of their interest in Ketia. So uh, that would be a very, very intriguing move for the player if Arsenal wanted to go for it. But 90 min are saying that Arsenal are looking at Patrick Schick, who scored 16 goals in 14 Bundesliga games. Very, very impressive. Now, our final story uh, returns to a player that was linked to the club some time ago, and that is Tarek Lamptey. Duncan Castles on his Transfer Window podcast has said that Arsenal, who had an interest in Lamptey when he emerged on the scene in the Premier League before that difficult injury, they are looking again to sign him and exploring the parameters of the deal. Now, I would say take this with a pinch of salt. I'm still waiting for something to come true uh, <laughs> that's come from this source. Um, but it doesn't surprise me. Arsenal are known to have an interest in Tarek Lamptey. He's known to be a player that they are very keen about. They have been tracking for some time, even from his time at Chelsea. And when he moved to Brighton, it was seen as an opportunity to allow him to flourish there before maybe moving for him later. He would cost probably a significant amount of money. Only just signs, not this summer gone, but the previous one. So he's got a long-term deal with Brighton. They're even looking to try and sign him up to a new contract. Nothing I don't think has happened at this state of play. But I know that he's a player that Arsenal like. The problem is, is would he be convinced to join Arsenal knowing that Tommy Yasu is there? But arguably, you'd have a look at what Nuno Tavares has done, see how many minutes he has played, even without European football, and suggest that Mikel Arteta is open to allowing these players time. Tommy Asu is a versatile player that could play at centre-back if you need him to. We could switch to a back three, in which case Lamptey would be an excellent wing-back option for Arsenal. This does open up a very interesting view of where things could go for the club at right-back if anything does end up happening with Lamptey, of course. And that is all of today's transfer news, which means we will move now on to the chat box and your questions. So if you do indeed have a question for the chat box and for myself, do throw it in and I'll do my absolute best to go through as many of them as feasibly possible. Okay, let's uh, let's jump into the chats and see what you're saying. Mo fellas, hit the like button and show Tom some love. Thank you, Mo. Much appreciate that. If you haven't already done so, please do drop a big press on that like button. Those interviews. Oh, I got cut out for a second. I hope you still heard what I was saying. And typically, pretty good connection <laughs> too. But do drop a like on the video. Do show us some love and do show that you appreciate the hard work that goes into putting on this show every single day. Uh, Aya, thank you so much for the donation, mate. Looking at Barca's financial situation and their lack of centre-backs, would, they would need to sacrifice a good player. Would you swap Saliba for Frankie de Jong? Oh, that's a good question. Would I swap Saliba for Frankie de Jong? Why is my internet going? I don't understand. I'm trying to sort this out. I don't really know why this is happening. Uh, give me one second. I'll just see if I can connect to the Wi-Fi. Because I'm on wired connection. I don't know why this is happening. Let me connect to the Wi-Fi. Connected. Uh, I'm hoping that this now goes through Wi-Fi. If it doesn't, I don't know what to tell you. Sorry about this. Um, let's go back to the question that I was asking. Um, the financial situation, would I swap? I would say yes. Um, I would say a thinking face must have been thinking for. Ah, for goodness sake, hold on a second, guys. Mm. 
Right, I'm now on the Wi-Fi. I'm hoping that this is going to work. This is really irritating. Why? Why is it doing this? <laughs> Hopefully, now that I'm on the Wi-Fi, it's going to be fine. I'm really getting frustrated with these silly connections. Is it because it's even connected? I don't know. I'm going to have to check these out later. Hopefully, I'm not freezing now. Tell me if I am in the chat box, but hopefully things should be back to normal. Let's go back to that question and ignore that the last minute even happened. Uh, Aya says, looking at Barca's financial situation and their lack of centre-backs, they would need to sacrifice a good player. Would you swap Saliba for De Jong? And I would lean towards, yes, I would. Um, I would actually think that it's an option for Arsenal to do. I don't think it's something that would happen. But I, what I would say is that Arsenal's need at central midfield is a lot greater than their need at centre-back. And to arguably get in a player of Frankie de Jong's quality at 24 years of age for a player like Saliba that's never played for Arsenal, I think it would make absolute sense um, to go in for that. It would make absolute sense to go in and swap those two players around because Frankie de Jong is a brilliant player and Saliba is still pretty much unknown. So yes, I would swap those two without a shadow of a doubt. Um, how many players do you think will sign in January, says MFB? I think we'll sign... I want to say two. I feel like it'll be one. My head says one, my heart says two, so that's what we'll do. Uh, Matt G says, how would you rank our last 10 captains in terms of impact? Okay, let's go through these out of 10. Henri, as a captain, seven? As a captain, six, seven? Wasn't an amazing captain. I never really liked strikers being captains. Gallas, I mean, he lost it, so what, three? Fabregas, Van Persie, again, back down to a seven. Vermaelen, probably back to an eight. Arteta, an eight or a nine. They Obviously, we won our first trophy for nine years under them too. Mehta Zaka, I really liked as a captain. Probably give him an eight as well. Koscielny, an eight. Xhaka, I mean, a five. Did some good things. Did a really bad thing. Uh, so, probably around a five. Abamyang, probably about a two. Uh, <laughs> it's probably been the worst captain we've had, to be fair. It doesn't inspire the team in terms of his leadership skills and, you know, consistent issues behind the scenes. So, yeah, probably the lowest. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, Yosef says, Patrick Schick looks like Kai Havertz. Will you be worried about him flopping? Uh, no, I don't. I don't think he looks like Kai Havertz either. I think they're two very different players. Drew will tell you that they are two very different players. Players that move with the Bundesliga still do very, very well in the Premier League. That it's not You don't look at Kai Havertz and say, I don't think Kai Havertz has necessarily been a flop. I just don't think he's been able to match the huge transfer fee. But I think he's still given plenty to Chelsea in the short space of time that he's been there. And hopefully we'll give... I say hopefully, I don't want him to do well at Chelsea, but I like him as a player. I don't really want him to fail. But maybe he'll move and go somewhere else and do really, really well. Uh, Manos, I mean, he's scored the Champions League final. He won a Champions League for them, so there is that. Do you think Arsenal will uh, be in for Serge Gnabry this summer? Maybe. I mean, he's an option that... I mean, he's gradually getting less and less minutes at Bayern. They look to be bringing in a wide player again. Kulisevsky's been linked. Maybe it's one that we need to look at. Um, D4RZ, uh, D4R7L says, uh, or Daryl, I maybe believe that's meant to be. Uh, hey Tom, would you take Martial for the right price? No, I think there are better options. And I said on Tuesday's show, if they're not getting into United's team, should we really be looking to sign them? We need to be signing players that would get into the clubs that are we are competing with, not players they're getting rid of. Uh, I saw says, who fits the current Arsenal philosophy, Davison Sanchez or Zacharia? Um, I mean, Zachary, young central midfielder, Davison Sanchez, currently at Spurs. I'm not sure that we would go in for him. Uh, and he's had a fair few issues during his time there. So I'm not sure that's the right player that we would go for. Um, let's go. <laughs> Freezing more than Canada, says Michael. Yeah, apologies. I think I'm fine now. I think the technology has sorted itself out. As soon as I go on Wi Fi, I'll tell you what, I'm never going on this silly wired connection again. It's not working and it's really, really frustrating. Um, Stephen says, I dropped the Schick check during the Euros and you wasn't that enamoured. Fair play, you have seen the light. Now I'll bug you about Skimaka. Uh, look, I mean, prior to the Euros, Schick hadn't really had a season where he was electric, was brilliant, had been consistent. And that's why I was a little bit apprehensive about kind of bringing in Patrick Schick. I thought he was a player that is good, but wouldn't necessarily guarantee you goals. But he's built on that Euro success. In this season, so I think that's why you can change your mind on the player because he's proving people right and he's proving me wrong. So always happy to change your mind on a player if he puts in the not puts in the effort, but puts in the goals and you know changes people's minds. 
Uh, Truth says, wow, I'm actually catching this live. Hope you're having a great day. Well, you caught the wrong show because my connection has been bloody awful this morning. Uh, Ty Gunasura says, who makes the sales deal at Arsenal? Is it, uh, is it and why is it so poor? Uh, Edu is very much in charge of the sales department, along with uh, a number of other people around him, like Richard Garlic and Arteta to an extent as well. It's just been poor of late in general. Like We were poor before Edu. Hopefully, we're going to see some improvement. Joe Willock sale was very good, but we've got a lot more players that we need to move on for better prices, and hopefully we will. Uh, Alejandro says, don't you ever get tired about talking about the same thing every day? I mean, football's not the same thing every day, Alejandro. It's it's different. New things change. Some things do come back, but look, I, I do this show. I go to work. I write about Arsenal for eight hours, uh, talk about Arsenal for eight hours, and then I do something else in the evening. Maybe sometimes I do a podcast, but... I do try and take my mind off Arsenal when I'm not working or doing the channel. And that allows me to, you know, be pretty smooth at doing what I'm doing. So, yeah, I don't really get tired of it. No. Uh, Taxman says, do you uh, have Geek Squad over there or is it just a Yank thing? I don't know what Geek Squad is. Um, <laughs> we might do. It doesn't just because I don't know what it is doesn't mean that I don't know. Uh, what it, it's a subsidiary of an American and Canadian multinational consumer electronics corporation, Best Buy, headquartered by Richard uh, Richfield, Minnesota. I don't know what that is. And I assume it's a shop. Oh, no, I don't think we have it. Or I just haven't seen it. But maybe some of my British brothers and sisters in here will be able to tell you otherwise. Um, Alex says, can Erdegaard bring Haaland for the Norwegian connection? Probably not. But who knows? Uh, I, don't, I don't think he would move just because his mate Erdegaard's at the club. We would need to be back in the Champions League. We would need to be giving a lot more than we currently are. Um, Maya says, what about Bellerin, Torreira, Kalasnac, Marie and El Elneny? I mean, Bellerin, you'd hope with a year left on his deal, we can get at least around £15 million for. Torreira, we look like we're going to be getting about £12 million for. Kalasnac, I think, will probably move on a free. Marie, we should be able to get probably about £5 million for if we're lucky. And El Elneny's probably going to leave on a free. So from those five players, you're looking at getting probably around 30 odd million quid, which is not bad, but... They're all players that are looking like they're going and some are at the end of their contract other than Marie. Uh, and so it makes sense that we wouldn't be getting too much for those players. Uh, Yosef says, uh, are you worried about Saka's and Martinelli's contract situation considering our recent track record with contracts? Uh, no, I mean... Right. We're going to wrap things up there because clearly my internet does not want to do this show. It does not want to do this show today. I'm sorry. I don't know why it's messed up. I'm going to wrap things up before uh, I lose you again. I don't know. I'm going to have a sort out of what's going on with this internet because it's been bloody awful this morning. Um, (laughs) Thank you for tuning in. Thankfully, there was no issues through the whole of the, through all of the news part of the show, it was fine. So at least we got through all of that. I don't know what's going on with the internet. It's having a bad day, clearly, because you know it's not normally like this. Anyway, thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. Still drop a like on the video. I hope this isn't going to be like this during the stream. That would be really irritating. Um, But, uh, yeah, I'll see you soon. Uh, Fantastic day, people. And as always, up the Arsenal. Keep it safe. 